Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixel Perfect, and today I'm going to share with you one of the easiest ways to color grade in Photoshop. We're going to explore some essential Photoshop and camera raw tips and tricks to create drama with color. Also, if you want to go a little more advanced, you will also learn some lighting techniques to bring life to your images. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, I have something special for you. The complete interactive visual notes with all the downloads and instructions is available for you to check out right here. Thanks to our sponsor, Milanote, for helping us create these beautiful notes in no time. Milanote is a super easy to use tool to organize your creative projects. As a creative professional, we never know when inspiration strikes us. With Milanote, you can easily capture inspiration from all around the web, whether it's a simple image, link, or a video. When you keep your inspiration in browser bookmarks and all of those folders and desktops, it is impossible to see the connection between these ideas. Placing your initial notes, images and ideas onto Milanote's freeform canvas, you can start to imagine things that don't exist yet by making connections between things that do. Once your ideas are in place, we can use this to create a mood board or put together a creative brief for your next big project. They have templates for everything, so you don't have to start from scratch. You can also add text notes, photos directly from your iPhone using the latest Milanote iPhone phone app. For all other devices, you can access it directly from your browser. Creative professionals from the most prominent companies use it, from Google, Apple, Nike, Uber, and guess what? Even Adobe. And you know what's best? You can get started for free. Try Milanote right now using the link in the description. And if you are interested in the pro version, you can use the code PIX20 to get 20% off Milanote Pro forever. Back in the magical world of Photoshop, and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you already know what to do. Check the links in the description. Now let's get started. What we're going to use here is Adobe Camera Raw, but as a filter. Now, anytime you apply any filter, you want a backup. So first of all, let's make a copy of the background layer by pressing Control or Command J. Make sure that the background layer is selected. Then press Control or Command J. Now you have a copy. You can actually name this color grade if you wish to keep it organized. Before you apply any filter, keep in mind to convert this into a smart object. Why? So that any filter you apply, you will be able to change the values later and it's completely non-destructive. So with the color grade layer selected, go to filter, convert for smart filters and hit OK. You can always click on don't show this message again so that the second time you do it or the next time you do it, this message won't show up. Hit OK. But I keep it off because I teach you and I teach people, so I got to tell them. So once this layer is converted to a smart object, which you can tell by the symbol right there, you can go to filter and then Camera Raw Filter. And inside of this, we want to apply some colors to the highlights and the shadows. That's it. And the easiest way to do it is going to split toning right there. You see this icon right there? It's called split toning. If you hover over it, it will say split toning. Self-explanatory. Now in here, we're going to talk about balance later. Just focus on highlights and shadows. So what color you want in the highlights and what color you want in the shadows. However, if you just change the hue, if you just select a color, let's say I want blue in the shadows, it just won't show up. Why is that? Because the saturation is zero or the amount of color is zero. You need to push it. But what's the best way to check which color will suit the best? Well, I've got a trick for you. All you got to do is to hold the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac when you move through hue. So when you hold the Alt key or the Option key, and then when you drag this, it will assume momentarily that the saturation is at 100%. So let's say if we stay at 185, this is the look if we hold the Alt key. So if I hold the Alt key and if I click and drag in here at 189, this is the look. If I increase the saturation, it's the same look. So temporarily, it will assume that the saturation is at 100. So it helps you choose the right color but you can later control the saturation anyway. So let's decrease the saturation all the way to zero. And you can use this trick by holding the Alt key or the Option key. Just drag and see which color suits the best in the shadows. So I'm going to go with somewhere about this cyan-ish kind of color or more bluish. Let's go for 222. That suits best. Now let's control the saturation. How much of this color do you want? So I'm going to go for, let's go for a little higher number in here. You're going to make it moody. All right, this is fine. Let's go, let's choose the highlights. So hold the Alt key or the Option key again, and then click and drag on this slider 
and we're gonna go for a yellowish color. Let's go for 65-ish. Yes, that looks nice, but it's kind of too much, of course, because it assumes the saturation to be at 100. So we're gonna choose a saturation of, let's say, let's go for about 70-ish, 74-ish. And there we have a kind of look. It's not absolutely amazing, but we have got a good starting point. Now, what is balance? Balance determines what is shadow and what is highlight. So it is that kind of borderline. So let's suppose this is shadow, half of this table, this is shadow, and half of this table is highlight. And if we choose blue for the shadows, it's gonna apply blue to half the table on the right hand side or your left hand side, and it's gonna apply half the table as yellow. Now, if you change the balance, this border between the highlights and the shadows, or I don't know which side was which, will change. That's it. So if we change the balance, see, the highlight border is moving towards the dark area, meaning now you have less color in the shadow and more of the color in the highlights. If you move it towards the left hand side, the opposite will happen. So for me, I'm going to keep it at about Let's go for, how about we take it to the negative side, just a touch. Minus two or minus three is good for us. Now that we are here in camera, why not explore more sliders other than the split toning? So let's explore the basic tab. So this is actually the basic tab, select that and play with the exposure a little bit. So let's set the exposure in here to, let's decrease the exposure to create the mood in this case. This looks nice to me. Now, to make anything impactful, we increase the contrast. So let's bump it up a little bit to about, see somewhere about, let's go a little higher. So we are going a little higher. I know it's crushing the shadows, but we're gonna increase the shadows later. That doesn't matter. So we're gonna go for about 30, okay? So let's say the highlights. So how much highlights do you want? Do you want less of it, more of it? I think the normal was fine. Maybe just a hair to the right hand side. Now, as I said, since we increased the contrast, it crushed the shadows a little bit. So let's increase the shadows. So we're gonna increase it to about 40. What do you think? Even more if you want to add some more brightness in the shadows. So let's go for about 50% or 50 number, whatever you wanna call it. Now white, I'm gonna keep it at the way it is because if I increase it, it looks good. But later we're gonna add some lighting effect. So let's save it for that. But anyway, I'm gonna just increase it a touch about 13, 14%. Blacks, let's decrease it. Now, if you hold the Alt key or the Option key, it's gonna show you which areas are losing details, but we are not worried about that. It's all about creating that mood. As long as it looks beautiful, as long as the results are amazing, the client is not gonna look at the image and say, oh, that area is clipped, I'm worried about that. Don't worry about anything. Just go to a photography art gallery. You will find some international award-winning images and also some historic, most important images with the background completely clipped out and maybe the sky clipped out. It does not matter. Photography, in my opinion, is an art. As long as it looks cool, we are good. All right, anyway, so this is all right. So do you want a little bit of clarity? Let's just give a little touch of it. Dehaze a little bit. Wow, dehaze does bring a little difference in there. So let's go for 12. Yes, that number looks good. Now there's a difference between vibrance and saturation. Saturation amps up the color of every single pixel. Doesn't matter if it's a highlight or a shadow. Doesn't matter if it's the darkest pixel of the image or the brightest one. Unless it's black or white, exactly completely black or white, it will amp up the saturation or the amount of color of that pixel. We do not want that. We just want to increase the color of the midtones or the areas that are already saturated a little bit. So for that, we need to just bump up the vibrance. So let's increase the vibrance to about, usually I somewhere don't go beyond 45. So for this example, 33 or 30 is good. So let's keep it at that and keep in mind, anytime you can come back to this and change the value. So that's cool. Now that we are here, let's go ahead and apply some sharpening to it. So let's go to the sharpening tab, which is the detail tab right there and increase the amount all the way to the right first. That's the one thing that I do all the time. Then control the radius and then in the end, we adjust the amount. So when you control the radius, hold the Alt key or the Option key and keep on increasing it and stop at the moment where you begin to see these halos around the edges. So from the left hand side, keep on increasing it. Just when you begin to see the halos, stop. For me, it's gonna be about 1.3, 1.4. 
a little bit halo here and there is fine. And how much details you want, hold the alt key or the option key. If you take it to the right, you'll have more. If you take it to the left, you'll have less. If you hold the alt key, it will show you where the details are. I'm not really sure if you can see it on your screen because this is, I'm working on a 4K monitor right now. So watch in 4K if you can. So there we go. And let's just control the amount. So we're gonna keep the amount somewhere about 70, 71, that's fine. I want you to have a close look at the lipstick. It's not popping enough. We really want it to pop. We just add some saturation to it. We just add some saturation to the reds. So let's go to the saturation tab or HSL. Let's go there. And we just wanna play with the saturation of the reds. So we simply increase it and have a look. Lips become interesting. So here's the before, here's the after. Interesting, isn't it? So we're gonna keep it at about 53. Now, time for us to add some special effects to it. To add special effects inside of Camera Raw, we need to go to the FX or Effects folder. Click on that one right there. Now, if you want to add grain, you can, but first let's add some vignetting. So we're gonna take it to the left to add some darkness around the edges. Now, let me give you a tip right there. Take it all the way to the left right? And then decrease the feather all the way to the left. That way you are seeing which areas the vignette is applied. Then you control the midpoint and the roundness. So how inside you want it to be or how outside you want it to be. For this image 50 is fine. And roundness is something you can also control if you want it to be completely round or square like that. That's also something you can do once you have adjusted those and then you can feather it all out and control the amount. So you're gonna keep the amount and adjust the midpoint. So for me, we just won't focus over there. So let's keep it at about 24, so that only that area that we want our viewers' attention to go, only that area is bright, rest of the areas are black. So now let's add some feather to it. How much feather you want? About 50 is fine. Now amount, I think it's very dark. So let's go for somewhere about this 38 or 39 looks good to me. Keep in mind when the amount is in minus, it goes dark. When the amount is in plus, it goes bright. So we're gonna go to minus 40, that's okay. And once you're satisfied with all of this, and by the way, why not add some grain to it? So let's zoom in and add some film grain effect. So let's add about 43%. You see the grain right there? You're adding a little bit of grain. You can also control the size of the grain if you wish to. So for me, I'm gonna keep it at that and also the roughness, how rough you want the grain to be. I just want minimal grain effect. And there you go, just a simple one. If you don't wanna have it, you can keep it at zero as well. That's also something you can do. But I wanna have a little bit. It just adds some texture to the photo, which is pleasing to the eyes. All right, once you're all good, hit okay. Now, as I said, keep in mind, you can always change these values if you wish to. So if you sometimes think, oh, I need to increase the highlights a little bit, you can always go back here by double clicking on camera. It takes you back to the exact same settings you had put in. Have a look at this. And then you can just adjust the highlights from here. For me, it's fine, so I'm just gonna hit cancel. See how easy this was to calibrate this image? Have a look at the before and after. So here is the before. Here is the after. Drastic change, isn't it? Now you can control the opacity if you think this is too much. Decrease the opacity and then you can increase it. That's absolutely upon you. I can keep it at that, about 49% opacity. This looks cool. But if you wanna take it a step further, if you want to add some lighting effects and interesting shine to the image, stay tuned. So first of all, let's start with adding more attention to the eyes. Here's how you do it. Create a curves adjustment layer. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Now, take this slider right there, as you can see, this slider to the left making the brights brighter. Just focus on the eyes, look nowhere else. Where you're losing the highlights, it does not matter, just the eyes matter. All right, so we're gonna take it to the left. Actually, the eyeballs, that's it. This is okay. Now, you will select the mask and then press Control or Command I. Now, you can do this, the simple approach, you don't have to uh, do it in a complex way. I've made videos about it, but you can just simply do it. Look at where the light is coming from. So. The cast light is here. So always, always the reflection light or the light that reflects off the iris will always be on the opposite side. So here, this area will be bright. So let's make sure the flow and opacity is at 100 and the foreground color is white. Make the brush a little bigger. Make it just a little softer. 
and just dab right there. Okay, this looks good. Now make the brush smaller, softer, and paint with black on the areas where it shouldn't have been. So we're gonna just paint it black right there. Easy stuff, paint black around the pupil. All right, now we have something. If you want, you can also apply some blend diff to it. So double click on the right hand side of the layer, take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right, just like this. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart to make the transition smoother. Hit OK. Now you do not have to create this eye highlight for the other eye as well. You can just simply copy. So with the curves one, or let's name it I one or I left, our left. Just select that and then press Control or Command J. We have a copy. It looks awful because we haven't moved it. Just with the help of the move tool right there, move it to the right eye. There you are, simple. Now, we have to do some erasing here. So we will make sure the mask is selected. Take the brush, black as the foreground color, and then just simply erase it. No big deal, gone. Have a look, here's the before, here's the after. We have some highlights there as well. Now you can control the opacity of individual eyes. So this is eye right. And that one is eye left. Now I think eye left has a little more intensity because the light is falling on there, but I still think there needs to be a reduction in opacity. So we're gonna go for 75, right eye is okay. And have a look at the before and after again. Here's the before, here's the after. Such a magical difference. If you look at the image closely, there is light coming from the back. And you can tell that by looking at the edge of the hair and the body, right? So the light is of course coming from the back and on the left hand side. So let's add some flair to it. Very simple to do. There are lots of ways to add flair in Photoshop. However, what I'm gonna do, select the topmost curves adjustment layer so that the next curves that we create is on top of that. With the topmost selected, click on the adjustment layer icon and then create curves. Now we want it to be a little brighter. So we're gonna take it to the left. And this is before creating flare. So we are not creating a real flare, just an atmosphere of light. So we are just making it a little brighter. The light has a little yellow color to it. So how do we get yellow inside of curves? Just decrease the blue. Why? Because blue is the opposite of yellow. RGB opposite of CMY. I'm just trying to make sure that you remember that. Blue. Decrease the blues in the highlights. Something like that. Wow, that is also a nice effect, isn't it? But anyway, we don't want it all over the image. If you want it, you can keep it at that. That's your image, you gotta choose. Okay, so with the mask selected, press Control or Command I to invert it. Then you can take the brush, take a huge brush like this, and then just paint with white right there. And we are creating that nice uh, kind of light. See what it did? Added that dimension. Now, if you want to erase it, you can do that as well from certain areas. So we can. Change the color to black by pressing X. X toggles the foreground and the background color. Now let's zoom out and just, let's decrease the flow a little bit. Let's go for 20%. We're just making it a little softer, something like this. This works for us, I like that. Or alternatively, you can also do this with the gradient tool. So this is the gradient tool right there. You can choose the radial one, the second one, which is called the radial gradient. Now with the radial gradient, you can select the gradient here, this one, the first one, which is black to white, hit OK. Now, if you do it, opposite thing will happen. So you can just click on reverse. Now, the light will be added that way. So that's also something which you can do, All right? So this is also a type of light that you can add. Have a look at the mask right here. That's what it's doing. Look at that. Okay, now once we have that, you can choose to add a flare if you wish to. There's an easy way to do it. We have already talked about it. It's using a gradient. You can click on this adjustment layer icon and then choose gradient, the second one. Now you can create a gradient, single click on in here. You can create a gradient from color to transparent. So the second one here, right there, is actually color to transparent. Or you can just make sure that the top slider on the left has opacity 100 and the top right slider has opacity zero. And the top bottom slider, you can choose any color you want. You can double click on it to pick the color. So we're gonna choose, let's say, this yellow color right there. Let's saturate it a bit, hit okay. And as it goes to the right, we can choose, you know, an orangish color, something like that. Hit okay, hit okay again, and then change the style from linear to radio. And you can actually move this anywhere you want. So I'm gonna keep it somewhere about there. You can actually increase the size by increasing the scale. So you can just increase it how much you want it. 
So for us, if you want it this much, hit OK. And then you change the blend mode to screen because we always want to make sure that this is brightening it. Screen is the blend mode which brightens stuff. You always want to make sure that even by accident, it's not darkening anything. So let's change the blend mode from normal to screen. There you go. That way it, it makes sure that it's just brightened. So this is normal, which is just the color on top. It's darkening the hair. If you have a look, the hair was even brighter. After applying it, the hair went a little darker. We don't want that to happen. So select, sorry, change the blend mode from normal to screen. So now we have something to go for. Here's the before, here's the after. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Zoom out and have a look. Zoom out at the image. Look at it before, after. If you don't like it, decrease the opacity and see if you like it or not. For me personally, if you ask me, I don't like it. So I'm not going to keep it, keep it. But I gave you the option. If you want it, you can have it. Also, if you always want to change, if you want to change the location, you double click on the symbol right there. You can just move it anywhere you want just for, you know, certain effects. So I'm going to keep it right there and keep it turned off if you just to show you what can be done. So I'm going to keep it. Let's turn it off. Let's add some more effects in here. And this is one of the most important effects that will make a world of difference. Now, as the light is coming from the back, we want some parts of the subject to give some shine. And how do we add some shine to it? By simply dodging. And by the way, if you're not aware, dodging means brightening and burning means darkening. And that's why we get the term dodging and burning. All right, so let's create a curves adjustment layer. We're going to do a different kind of dodge because in the dodge, we want a little bit of the yellow. So we're going to add a little brightness in there. All right. And we're going to add a little yellow by going to the blue channel. We're going to decrease the blues to add the yellow to it. All right. Now in the yellow, we want to remove the greens or we want to add a little magenta. So we will go to the greens and decrease it. So we have a dodge layer right there for brightening stuff. Let's go back to the RGB and increase the overall. All right, now select the mask right there and press Control or Command I to invert it. We only need to paint on the areas which we want to brighten. So simply select the brush with a flow of one or two or three, anything you're comfortable with. I'm gonna go with 2%. Make sure you have selected the soft round brush and then just start highlighting a couple areas. If you're using a Wacom tablet, you can of course choose a higher flow and then set the flow to pen pressure and the opacity to pen pressure as well. So I'm just going to decrease the size of the brush. All right. And then just start highlighting these areas with white. Make sure the foreground color is white and simply start highlighting these areas. Parts of the hair here and there randomly. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go for 10% and I'm going to keep it at pen pressure. So I'm going to choose the brush one of my favorite ones, soft round pressure, opacity and flow. So it sets the opacity and flow to pen pressure, meaning the harder I press, the more the opacity and the flow will be. So let's set it that way. Probably want to set it to 15%. See, easily I'm adding some highlights here and there. If you think the brightness is not high enough, you can actually increase it. And I think it needs more yellow. So I'm going to go back to the blue channel and decrease the blues. And go back to the green channel and decrease the greens a little more. All right. And that's the advantage of creating uh, these curves adjustment layers because anything can be changed later. Look at the difference we made. Here's the before, here's the after. Just a little difference here. All right, so we have added some on the hair. Here's the before, here's the after, just some shine. Let's, let's make sure all of the areas that need the shine have the shine. And it's absolutely fine if some area clips, it just adds to the beauty of the photo. I'm gonna show you later in the tutorial how to get rid of that and how to solve that, fix that in an artistic way. It's okay if you lose data in some areas, that's fine. All right, now have a look at that. Here's the before, here's the after. Adding some really bright spots helps. Now, let's have a look. Before, after. I'm just decreasing the opacity. If you think this is too much, you can always decrease the opacity. So I'm going to keep the opacity at somewhere about 75%. There we have. This is just for the hair. We can actually name this hair. Now make another copy of this one. Just with the hair layer selected, Control or Command J. And with this one, we will just do it on the skin and the other areas. So first of all, let's delete, delete the mask, 
delete it and we're going to create a new mask hold the alt key or the option key click on the mask button to create a negative mask now let's start painting on these areas so before after before after just a touch of shine there and you can actually change that if you want a lot more magenta here we'll go to the green channel and decrease it this adds a little more magenta go to the blue channel and decrease it it will add a little more yellow if you go to the rgb channel this is for brightness a little more brightness does go a long way there you go before after before after just a touch now let's have a look at the overall before and after here's the before here's the after it it is going in the right direction let's go back to this one and let's do a little bit just a touch of the face and the neck right there see what kind of highlights we are adding it's really making a difference here now for this part you can actually do with a soft brush like this and then erase it in the end so now press x get the black color and then erase it you can increase the flow for that one let's go for 20 percent if you want to see the mask you can hold the alt key or the option key click on the mask to see it and you can erase it from the top if you want to hold the alt key or the option key click on the mask to view it again now if you want to remove this brightening from the dark areas you can also do that let me just go back a little all right if you want to automatically remove it from the dark areas double click on the right hand side of the limb this takes us to the layer styles dialog box inside of that in blend if take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right It'll automatically hide in the dark areas we don't want to keep it that harsh so we'll hold the alt key or the option key click on the slider to break it apart and then break it like this there we are have a look here's the before here's the after you can also do this in other parts of the image as well like the nose so select the mask right there and this time let's try on the nose now you can also do it in the hand as well we really have come a long way now i know what you're thinking and i've not forgotten that you might be saying the highlights are too much we are losing details in the highlights that's fine all you got to do is to add a curves adjustment layer at the top click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves it's okay for the brightest sprite to be a little dark just a tad bit dark so that when you print it that area just doesn't go completely inkless so here's what you do you take the rightmost point and bring it down a little just a touch like that there you are and have a look here is the before here is the after now remember everything we did was absolutely non-destructive which means that if you want to change something in camera raw you can go there so let's go to camera raw right here all you got to do is double click on it camera raw will open up now i think we need to add some um faded effect to it so let's go to the tone curve right there and just add some brightness to the shadows just make sure you are in point curve right there so we will add that and add an overall shadow just like this see what kind of mood we are creating here hit okay see what changes it makes have a look it makes a world of difference doesn't it so have a look here's the before and here is the after if you want to add some more edge to the light i think we need to add more yellow to it so if you look at the light right there that we had added i think we need more yellow so let's go to the blue channel right there and take it down even further see that see what it's doing to it to it we're going to increase the opacity to 100 see the yellow we are adding there i'm absolutely liking it let's increase the brightness not much just a touch have a look now it's much better than before and there you are before after so there you go that's one of the easy ways to color grade in photoshop now some of you my friends might say unmesh that wasn't easy that was way way difficult it's okay all you need to remember was the camera raw adjustment step that's it anything after that requires a little mastery over the curves adjustment layer and i highly recommend this video once you go through this video i can guarantee that curves will be a breeze for you and you can do all of the things that we did today yourself very quickly maybe even quicker than me just remember i don't want to confuse you just remember make a copy of the background convert it to a smart object open 
camera raw go to split toning now inside of split toning hold the alt key or the option key play with the hue of the shadows and the highlights it will assume that the saturation is at 100 select the color and then choose the saturation after that just play with all the sliders in there that's what i did you don't have to think about how much exposure i need how much shadows i need just see what looks good to you that's it don't even worry about clipping or anything or white balance and all of that stuff if it looks good to you good to go and after that we added some lighting effects using curves adjustment layer i hope this video helped you and if it did make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tip trick or tutorial i would like to take this moment and thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on patreon and helping keep pix imperfect free for everybody forever thanks so much for all your support thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating